Welcome to part 4 of Finding Volumes of Solids of Revolution. In this part, we're going to revolve the same region about the y-axis using the disk method. And in the next part, we'll use the shell method. Let me state the example completely. The region is bounded by the curves x minus 2, y equals 0, and y equal to x squared over 8. In this example, we're going to revolve the region about the y-axis and use the disk method to find the volume of the solid generated. Now let's look at this region. Think of it going around the y-axis. How should we slice it? Do we use vertical slices or horizontal slices in order to use the disk method? You got it. We'll have to use horizontal strips. Here's one of them. How thick is it? It's a small piece of Y, isn't it? We'll label it dy, and that's a clue that this problem is going to be an integral with respect to Y. The next step is to label the endpoints of the strip. Which coordinate do the two endpoints have in common? the y-coordinate. We're going to fill in the x-coordinates of those two points using just y's. Let's look at the point on the blue line, x minus 2y equals 0. What's x there? It's always 2 times y. There it is. Let's slide over to the other side, to the parabola. What is the x-coordinate of that point? x squared is equal to 8 times y, so x is the square root of 8 times y. Here's a picture of the washer. You could see that its volume is the volume of the big disk minus the volume of the small disk. All right, let's try to fill in the information using the simpler picture. Here we go. The volume of the big disk and the small disk are both pi radius squared times the thickness. So here's what we have. The pi factors out. And what we're going to do is fill in the big R and the small r next. What's the big radius? It is the big x coordinate. So we get square root of 8y. And what's the small radius? That's the small x coordinate. That's 2y. Simplify. Now we see the volume of our washer. The total volume is the sum of all these. And what does y do? y moves from 0 to 2. Now we can integrate. Integrate the first term, we get y squared. Integrate the second term, we get y cubed over 3. Plug in the upper limit 2, we get 4 pi times 4 minus 8 over 3. A 4 factors out, we get 16 pi outside times 1 minus 2 thirds. And the answer is 16 pi over 3. Wow, this was so much easier than rotating around the x-axis, wasn't it? Next time, we'll use the shell method, okay? See you then. Bye.